guys so welcome back if you're new to my channel or simply not yet subscribed i'm Brittany, and definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button i'm also doing a mystery box giveaway all you have to do to enter is make sure you like the video hit the subscribe button and comment down below what you are going to be for halloween and then you're entered takes two seconds so go ahead and do that quick and let's dive in normally i will dive a little bit deeper into an urban legend but today is just going to be kind of a con, like, it's going to be multiple urban legends, but kind of just like some of the scariest urban legends. I personally think that there is some truth to almost every, like, urban legend or legends or myth. This one is from Louisiana, and it's the Devil's Toy Box. And this was derived from a Halloween attraction in Northern Louisiana. It was closed after people had went into this like cube shaped room that was in a shed. Near the end of the attraction, the walls were lined with mirrors. So this room with mirrors is all that really remains of the attraction today. But it, the legend goes that if you enter this room, the devil will steal your soul. And the interesting part is like there's what I'm envisioning is that there's a bunch of mirrors facing each other, which would create a portal. So even if it's not the devil himself, I'm sure that there's spirits that are not great in there that might make you feel a certain type of way. So then in India, you have Dow Hill Forest. Dow Hill Forest is located in Kurasong, India. And there's been a lot of different murders that have happened here. And a lot of people believe that the spirits of those victims still roam the forest. There's a popular legend that revolves around being followed by a headless boy. And if you're not lucky, he will never stop. It said that if you find yourself walking along in Death Road and you hear footsteps, you should pay attention to where they are coming from. If they're behind you or they come from a direction that you can't see, you need to go the opposite direction from where they're coming from. You don't want to look in that direction. But if you do see the little boy walking towards you or you even catch a glimpse of him walking away, it said that he will follow you for the rest of your life. And that people have actually been driven insane by the continuous seeing him or because of how much they are seeing him. And that some have even attempted to take their own lives just to get rid of him. Which is, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I can't imagine seeing a spirit. Like, I was, I've seen spirits. But to see one so tragic, I think, would really affect you. Especially if you're seeing him over and over and over no wonder if someone would be driven mad. So then in Arkansas, there is the Garden Light. So this one has a lot of different variations as a lot of urban legends do. But in one of these variations, there's a railroad worker who was hit by a train and unfortunately he got decapitated. Spirit can still be seen today and he's searching for his lost light. In another version, he was a railroad worker who had a very violent grudge against his boss who had fired him. And that he murdered his boss with a railroad spike. Sounds like a very horrible way to go. That the victim now wanders the tracks. Now, numerous people have seen this light, but no one really knows what it is. Let me know if you guys have ever seen it. Then there is the Char Man of San Antonio Creek in California. So according to local lore, there was a father and a son who were trapped in this horrendous fire. The father died before help could come. And the son was so traumatized by the event and losing his father that he went insane. So he actually skinned his father and then he ran into the forest. Well, not really sure why he did that because his father died. That's like Norman Bates stuff. 
But anyways, he is known as the Charman. And he has this blackened, burnt body. So he looks like he, you know, probably should have lost his life in the fire. Like he's severely burnt. And he said to attack motorists on Creek Road in Oja, Ojai, O-J-A-I, because he wants more human skins. Actually, that reminds me of Jeepers Creepers. There's one part in that movie, I mean, it's a decently old movie now. Um, there's one part that his foot gets ran over and he's just kind of like wobbling. And um, I always thought that part was funny. I mean, he's the bad guy. So he's just like, oh, he got hurt. Um, but it's like Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those eyes? Is the song. But he would go around like making masks and stuff of other people. So that kind of fits into that i feel like very demented so i think there's also a serial killer that did things like that so then there's florida's captain tony's so captain tony's was built in 1852 and it's the oldest saloon in key west and it's also known to be haunted there's doors that slam for no reason and there's a lot of banging noises and people will see ghosts frequently so it's said that the site was the town's original morgue and was built around a tree that the town once used to hang pirates. I've always been really fascinated by pirates. I just, I like the idea of looking for something that people like don't see, I guess. Like just the adventure and Imagine going out and finding something like the Holy Grail or this mysterious treasure that you're looking for clues and that does just seem so fun to me. I mean, I'm sure it was a lot of hard work and, you know, conditions weren't always great, but just the search and the satisfaction of finding something that not many people have laid their eyes on just sounds amazing to me. Maybe it's just me. I talked to Jeff about this and he's like, no, it's just you. <laughs> then in Idaho, there are the water babies of Massacre Rocks. Now this one's a pretty heavy one. Not that, you know, other ones weren't, but this one's pretty bad. So when, so in Pocatello, you know, famine hit pretty hard and Mothers ended up resorting to drowning their babies in the rivers instead of letting them starve to death. You know, this wasn't uncommon as bad as this sounds. Um, I mean, it's it's just horrible. As bad as this is, it doesn't even sound bad. It's just bad. Um, you know, that's where a lot of the changeling lore comes in, where families wouldn't have enough to feed all of their children so they would get rid of their baby and it's horrible i can't imagine especially being a mother now ever getting rid of my baby or my children i would rather go before them so I, I don't, I guess it just was such desperation or maybe they thought they, they were doing them a favor. I don't know. It's, I don't know how you do that. Anyways, it's said that those babies turned into fish-like imps, which are kind of like a fairy. Um, their new mission was to trick or even kill people. So they definitely held a grudge against people with what their mothers did to them. Then we have Kentucky's Hogan's Fountain. This is in Cherokee Park and it features a statue of the Greek god Pan. And Pan was like a, a satyr. Um, so he was half goat, half man, but obviously he's the god, he's a forest god. So at every full moon, some versions will say at every midnight, but the figure of Pan wanders the park and he will cause mischief 
for people that come by. Because you make it makes you wonder, like, is this really the spirit of Pan? In Ohio, we have four orphanage. So in the 1800s, there was a deadly fire at, it was actually named Gore Orphanage in Lorain County. So unfortunately, every single child died. And locals will say that if you stand in the place that the orphanage was, that you will see the spirits of the children and you will hear them playing or even I guess it's not, I mean, it's sad. It's definitely sad, but just seeing a spirit of a child, what I feel like would mostly just invoke sadness, but even worse, some will actually smell them burning, which is just incredibly disturbing. And then in Oklahoma, we have Shaman's Portal. People have allegedly disappeared into thin air, just poof, gone, when they had set foot in these specific dunes in beaver sands. And this is also known as like Oklahoma's Bermuda Triangle. So it's believed that a UFO crashed in that location, which had opened a door into another world. It'd be cool to visit another world. I have my laptop in front of me. So if I'm looking down, that is what I'm looking at. So in Rhode Island, we have Fingernail Freddy, which I will do a video that dives into this more, but I do just want to mention this. So I think it is quite interesting. So I will do a more in-depth video of this. But um, the Fingernail Freddy is supposed to be the inspiration for the Nightmare on Elm Street. Fingernail Freddy is a wild woodsman with insanely long fingernails who comes out at night to attack campers with his talents. I feel like every camp has that like or like summer camp has a like a creepy legend this is the last one so in south dakota there's a legend of walking sam walking sam is kind of like slenderman he's very unnaturally tall he's skinny and just overall really creepy and according to the legend, if you come in contact with him, you will have this like overwhelming urge to take your own life. And he particularly targets young teens. So I will do a full video about Fingernail Freddy, but if there's other topics in this video that you want me to really dive into, just let me know down below. Or if there's any specific urban legend that I have not covered yet that you would like me to look into and do a video on, you can mention those as well. Also, if you have any paranormal encounters that you would like to share with me, so you can go ahead and email me at brittanybrewerghosts at gmail.com. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. Make sure to like this video. Hit the subscribe button for me. And until tomorrow, I love you guys. Bye.